Welcome to Coach Ogi. You know, it's been a while, but right here, I want to show you my top stocks for 2025. Now, if you've been following me, both on this YouTube channel and in my community, you will know that I love to enter a stock early. So in as much as I like to enter a stock early, I like, I do research, I look at other things to make sure that I'm buying the right stock. So here, I'm giving you access to my early stocks for 2025. That means by the time you start taking position right now ahead of the new year, you stand a chance of making a lot of money when the stock moves. It's also possible that these stocks can actually pick up before the end of this year. After all, anything can happen in December into January. So let's dive into our course for today. So we're looking at the best Nigerian stocks to buy in 2025. Now, I'm not going to share the stocks just like that, but I need to share some insights with you and how I'm able to pick the stock and some of the things you should watch out for in 2025 that might actually shape the market and also define the direction of Nigerian stock market. So here we're looking at market insights, analysis, ideas, and sector recommendation for smart traders. Now, before we get started, let's look at the disclaimer. While I will attempt to share profitable insight that will have worked for me in my years of picking within Nigerian stocks, please do your due diligence before you invest in my selected stock. Very important. Now, before I pick a stock, there's one thing I don't joke with. And I always tell members of my community, and that's the fact that I always follow CBN policy. So CBN policy is very key if you want to become a profitable trader. So don't say, oh, I don't work in CBN. Whatever happened in CBN does not concern me. No. Whatever happens in CBN is actually a major driver, a major catalyst behind stock prices. Stock can either go up or down depending on CBN policy direction. So when you follow CBN policy direction, it will help you understand the direction of fixed income markets, the currency market, and equities market. Don't be an isolated stock trader who is just interested in everything that is happening in the stock market and nothing but um, the stock markets. You also need to look at the fixed income markets and then the currency market because at the end of the day, the events in the fixed income market and currency market actually affect the stock market. We call it intermarket analysis. So we're going to use intermarket analysis to come down to what sector is best to buy your stock and the kind of stock I'm looking forward to in 2025. Now, the CBN has been increasing policy rates. And right now it's sitting at 27.5%. Sorry, 27.25%. Now, what is the effect of that on the fixed income market? Treasury bill bonds are very attractive right now. So, and that means people will move their money away. So one of the risks of investing in stock when rates are high is because liquidity drain tends to lead to low activities in the market because people will rather put their money in assets that is attractive. So look at it now. You have to be staying at you at 24%. And then will you go invest in stock? This is it. But then it still doesn't mean stock market investment is bad. But if you play the, if you play by sector rotation, there are still sectors that are still benefiting from this rising interest rate. So we've been doing that and we'll be making a lot of money from this particular sector. For instance, look at UCAP. UCAP had done extremely well this year. Look at Custodian. Custodian had done extremely well this year. Look at Veritas Capital. These are stocks that I've recommended and have made good gains in the market. For instance, before you can stop split, you can dip to a price of, um, I think, 19. I shared a video on this same YouTube platform. But today, the stock had touched a high after, before the stock split. And then the company issued bonus and all that. So you can see where UCAP is selling for right now because the company is benefiting from what? Increasing interest rates. Veritas Capital also did the same thing too. I remember, remember when I mentioned the stock, at the price of 60 cobble right here, and then your tax capital picked up and then it went to as high as one that has 60 come something couple. I made a lot of money from this. These guys are also benefiting from increasing interest rates. So the idea is just to play by sector rotation. So that's the fixed income market. So no matter the direction of the economy, there will always be a sector that is benefiting from it. So your own job is to look for who is benefiting, then channel your funds to that sector. So this is the fixed income market. I've shared the risk of liquidity during the stock market as a result of an uptick in interest rates. So Note that. Now, what is the effect on the currency market? The CBN has been increasing interest rate just to attract foreign portfolio investors. And I've always said it multiple times that increasing interest rates will not address our inflation problem here in Nigeria because unemployment is very high. You can't use interest rate to fight inflation if unemployment is very high, unlike the US economy. So at the end of the day, you will see that the dollar has continued to be strong against the Naira. Now, the dollar has broken into a high of 1,600 Naira per USD. So let's look at the dollar exchange rate against the Naira. 
you can see here. So in spite of all the multiple rate hike that the CBN has been implementing, none has actually um, cushioned the effect of rising exchange. The dollar has still go up. The dollar is still stronger. So the question is, why is interest rates not working in Nigeria? Well, that's a topic for another day. So now, despite the ongoing CBN tightening and external reserve topping 40 billion, the risk of higher interest rate is still there as inflation bites harder. In short, the fuel price hike right now is even adding to the inflation issues in Nigeria. An economy where inflation is high, the currency tends to lose value. So let's now go to so another areas event that is happening in the global market and how that might actually affect the naira in 2025 now look at tension in the middle east that's one thing you need to look at now right now we're looking at conflict between iran and the us and then the israel now if the conflict breaks out and iran is affected maybe oil facilities whatever it means the price of crude oil is going to rally higher, right? Now, if the price of crude oil rallies higher, then the risk of inflation is obviously in the U.S. is very, very high. And that means the Fed decision to cut interest rates might actually be halted. Why? Because inflation is surfacing and Fed cannot be reducing interest rates. Fed will have to find a way to keep rates constant or probably increase interest rates again. Now, at the end of the day, we expect the 10-year Treasury yield to surge higher, which poses a major risk to USD. When yield is high in the U.S. market, carry traders will automatically move their money away from Nigeria into the U.S. market. Why? Because their fixed income market is considered attractive because of the higher rates. Maybe that's why CBN is increasing rates, just to make sure that our rate is attractive compared to their own rate. But then if this whole thing plays out, then it means we might expect further rate depreciation in 20. 25. Another major event that would also drive rates in 2025 is the election outcome in the US. Now, election is a key event to watch out for. Now, if Trump wins, which is expected to come with a trade tariff, you know, during uh, Trump, Trump era in 2017 to 2022, when Trump started increasing tariff, you, we saw the trade war with China, and it's coming in with a bigger tariff this time around. So, that is actually going to affect U.S. inflation because at the end of the day, the, pro the price of a lot of products that are being imported into the U.S. will increase. Now, he's also saying he's going to cut tax from 21% down to 15%, which will all boost corporate earnings. Now, if you look at this whole event, they are expected to strengthen the USD because from the rate tariff, if you import any product from China or any other country, you're going to slam, they're going to slam you with a higher tariff, especially if it's a country that it doesn't like. Now, that means the companies that are producing in the U.S. will benefit more, and that's a boost for the U.S. economy. Another thing, again, is if he reduces corporate tax, that is also going to boost corporate earning. And at the end of the day, there will be much cash to spend because companies will be declaring bonus, so which will lead to inflation in the U.S. So that way, the U.S. Fed will definitely increase interest rates just to fight inflation. So then I think it's not good for the Naira. Then if Kamala Harris win, Kamala Harris win then it means uh, the, we're going to see continuation of what is happening right now in the U.S. is in dollar strength and the continuation of government policies. And then she's also proposing an increase in corporate tax, which may affect corporate earnings, hence drive inflation lower. Because if corporate earnings is lower, corporate will not be able to declare bonus, will not be able to pay higher salary, and then it means the spending power will reduce. So I think overall, Trump win might lead to higher inflation or higher dollar strength. Let me put it like that. And then Kamala Harris will probably ease dollar strength right now. So those are the things you need to watch out for. Now, the essence of this is for us to understand key macro indicators driving the market. Now, what are the macro indicators driving the market right now? First one is higher interest rates, 27%. Second one is exchange rates right now. Third one is oil and gas, middle east conflict. So we have the upstream, we have the downstream, which is higher uh, price of petrol and then the final one is inflation now you as an investor the question is how does this affect the markets now which sector is going to benefit from all these events that is going to play out in the midst of the higher interest rates in the midst of the increase in exchange rates in the midst of conflicts in middle east in the midst of the higher price in crude oil and then inflation which sector is actually benefiting from it this is exactly what i teach them in my community this is what I teach in my community, and this is how we pitch talk in my community. We look at macro events and then drilling down to the sector that is benefiting and eventually be able to pick certain stocks that will continue to benefit from this event. Now, these are my top sectors to watch out for. Now, finance sector, because of increase in interest rates, finance, investment, insurance, industrial, oil and gas, and consumer goods stock. I like to have a diversified portfolio. There will always be company in each of the sectors that is benefiting from the whole trend. After all, you don't have to concentrate or buy just one sector. So here, I've taken my time to share 
uh, certain sectors, certain stocks in this sector that will benefit. And I've dropped it in my community. So that's what I've been doing since January this year. We've been sharing stocks to buy back to back. And I'm glad the majority of our stock are doing extremely well. And I just shared an example of some of them. Now, I could even remember when I mentioned Fidelity Bank at Nine Naira. I'm not sure if you're, if you're a subscriber to my YouTube channel, you must have seen the result of Fidelity Bank right now. Fidelity Bank has moved from Nine Naira, 75 couple to reach 14 Naira. So that's a good one if you jumped into that stock so that's the essence of this analysis when you carry out analysis from top to bottom it will, it, will, it will be a lot easier for you to know the stocks to buy and the best uh sector to focus on this is exactly what i teach in my elite trader course so if you want to learn how all these analysis that i've just shared translate to opportunities how i'm able to interpret economic events and how help me pick specific stocks that will benefit in different sectors you can join the early trader course in the early trader course we teach the etf model the etf model is my own way of picking stock the e is for economic events by looking at economic events it will help you know the hottest sector in the economy now by looking at technical analysis we are able to enter at oversold region before they take off the best time to buy a stock is not when the stock is already high or when it's rising or when it has made it to the mainstream media the best time to buy a stock is when nobody has discovered it when it's still low when the price is down when it's emerging from an oversold period so that's this is what i teach in my etf model we use this particular model to pick different stocks in the market for instance look at this was november when I alerted everybody to go buy uh, Oando, you can see one soaring stock you should buy right now. So this was in November. You can see here, November 15, 2023. So imagine that you had positioned yourself on Oando stock since November 2023. And guess the price I recommended Oando stock then. You can see right here, I said Oando st stock should be, I think, around 10 and 45 Kobo. Let me look at the, let me look at this um, right here. Yes, yes. I say, well, what one just broke out of a multi year key level of 10 era, a region that has been tested and rejected multiple times since 2012 and torn resistance in 2017 till date. Can you see right here? So, this was a major error. So, I said the next visible region now is its previous high of 16 to 20. And when you compare this price level to today's close at 11.55, Owando has a 30 to 40 percent upside potential. A stronger demand above this target should take Owando back to the 24 high, but we didn't know it was even going to touch 90 naira. So, imagine that. You had keyed into Owando when I recommended uh, this 11 Naira. And right now, Owando is selling for 89 Naira. So I put all this analysis together to come up with stocks to buy. This is exactly what I shared. In short, people that have joined our June section of any trader course this year, I also showed them the technical setup on Owando. And it is the same technical setup that we use to trade Fidelity Bank, Livestock, um, Veritas Capital, UPDC, a lot of stocks that I recommended have done extremely well in the market. Now, when I buy a stock, I'm not the kind of trader that buy a stock and look for 100% overnight. I buy a stock, once it's up by a certain percentage, I sell on its way to the top. Taking profit is part of the game in this trading business. You don't have to hold your stock forever, especially when you are a trader. Then fundamental analysis is where we now identify promising companies. So imagine you carried out economic uh, research, you're able to find the hottest sector, now, you're able to find companies that is oversold. There's, a, there's going to be many oversold companies in that sector. But out of that oversold companies, there is there are some that are promising. Because when a stock is down, it's down for a reason. Some can be as a result of bad financials. Some can be as a result of uh, profit taking. So your own job is to look for stocks that have been beaten down but have good financials. Now, the reason they were beaten down is because the people that sold their ones to take profit. So at the end of the day, you're able to build a consistently profitable portfolio. So if you are interested in our early trader course, it holds three times a year, June, in February, June, and October. Three times in a year, February, June, and October. So the next batch is in February. So you have an opportunity to save up for that event. We also allow instrumental payment. So you can send a message to Glofolo Limited at gmail.com for fees and how to enroll for the program. Now, let me now tell you the stocks I am looking out for. The stocks I think are very strong buy in 2025. Now, I put a lot of things into consideration. Number one, if you look at the key macro events right now, now I look, I'm looking at a company that despite all these events, they are still making money, they are still benefiting. They are not to expose to increase in interest rates. These are the kind of stocks I want to buy in the market.
So even exchange rates, oil and gas. So with all these events playing out, these are companies that have been able to survive this trend. So here are my list of companies to watch out for. Although I have six companies, but I'm making two available for free subscribers for you on my YouTube channel. The remaining four, I have posted it on Glowfolio platform. So you have the full six stocks to buy right here. So I'm going to share the two stocks to watch. Now, this is it here. You can see six Nigerian stocks to own in 2025. So if you're a member of my community, kindly go to glowfolio.com, check the stocks to buy section, and then you will get access to I've posted all the six, six stocks already. So out of these six, I'm only sharing two. I'm only sharing two right here. So these are the two stocks that I'm looking at right here. Now, first one is Ikeja Hotel. Second one is Transcorp Hotel. So let's look at the fundamentals of these two companies, Ikeja Hotel and Transcorp Hotel. So I want to share the fundamentals of this company and why I think they have a lot of opportunities uh, to grow in 2025. Now, I'm not the kind of person that buys a stock based on emotional events or based on hearsay. These are stocks that follow the checklist I had just shared with you right now. And these are the checklists here. Economic events, they are benefiting from economic events. Technical analysis is telling me that they are, they are emerging from oversold and their fundamentals are very, very strong. That's the way I pick stock. So let's look at Ikeja Hotel right now. So first thing we want to look at is Ikeja Hotel Financial. So the recently re released result is Q3. So let's look at what the company delivered and why I think this guy might continue to do well in 2025 so this is the financial release so for nine months 2023 against nine months 2024 you can see revenue from 7.6 to 12.5 cost of sales 5 to 7 and then operating profit 1.6 to 3.2 profit before tax 1 billion to 3 billion and then profit after tax from 587 million to 2 billion now let's look at the Q3 results, three months. Now look at the three months here, 3.1 to 4.3. And then we have 1.1 to 1.5. We have 5 to 9 to 1 billion. Now this is what I'm interested in. I'm interested in the detail, detail reports. Now let's look at the revenue, note 11, note 11. Now, you know Ikeja Hotel is in the hospitality industry. And one of the things that um, hospitality industry is known for is upward adjustment of their product prices services in line with economic events now people will continue to book hotel accommodation is very very important shelter is key now look at revenue from room booking here you can see from 2 billion in 2023 to 2.9 food and beverage can you see 865 now this food and beverage is actually coming from food inflation because as price of food is increasing in the market. Now, these guys are also going to be factoring that increase. So you can see from 865 to 1.2, minor operating departments, 16 to 12, and then miscellaneous income from 150 to 160. So a major driver of this revenue is food and beverage as well as the room. Now, the room booking is coming from shelter, accommodation. No matter how high things are in the market, there will always be demand for room booking, hotel booking. Why? Because businesses would have to move from one place to another, meetings, events, conferences. So shelter is very key, Actually, temporary accommodation for people that are look, uh, moving to one or two uh, places just to do business. So hotel is always a business that is striving both in good and bad time. So this is it right here. The little hotel suffered is actually during COVID. So that's why I think this guy, this guy will continue to benefit. Now, another striking thing, about their financials is that you can see that with all the events playing out in the economy, these guys are not totally affected. First one, with the rising interest rate, look at the finance cost. Finance cost is almost at the same level right here. Now, there is nothing like exchange rate gain or loss right here, meaning that these guys are shielded from it. Look at finance income, 338 to 874. So let's go to note 14. Let me explain something again to you. Note 14 on the company's book. Yes, look at uh, finance income right here. Yes, note 14 from 71. Let me see here. Yes, from 180 to 185. So I, I thought I was going to see a breakdown of that. Now, finance income is actually coming from, majority of the income comes from interest on 
investment in fixed deposit, treasury bill, or bond, meaning that they are also benefiting from higher interest rates hike. And you know, one of the factors I share right here when we're looking at the macro events to watch out for is high interest rates. So when a company is benefiting from high interest rates, you will see that in their book, actually interest income. So it's not just banks or finance companies that benefit from high interest rates. Companies with large cash pile put their money in fixed deposit, bonds, and treasury bills. So that's what is rubbing off on this particular company here. So you see that with all these things, and it's really one thing, the fact that the company can actually review the cost of its product, food and beverage, and also room rates, and still be able to get more guests means that there's likelihood that the Kenya Hotel has huge upside potential in 2025. So let's look at the technical uh, side of this particular company, the Kenya Hotel right here. So you see here, Kenya Hotel is already up. Uh, by an average of 70% so far. Now, you might assume that this company has rallied so high and then it's actually going to dip. No. For my own analysis, there are so many things I look at. This is a perfect example of buy high and sell higher. I shared a take on Julius Berger earlier on on this same YouTube channel. Then Julius Berger was selling below 100 Naira. Julius Berger today is selling for 160 Naira because I put a lot of things into consideration before I tell you whether the stock will go up or not. So this is a very strong to stock to buy. After breaking into a new high, I think this guy is actually going to rally higher in months to come. So if you break this down to my weekly charts right here, so this look like a bull and flag pattern emerging on this particular stock here. You can see here. So this looks like a bullish, you can see here. So let me show something. Yes, you can see right now. Here, so a breakout from here means Ikeja Hotel might rally higher to new high. So watch out for Ikeja Hotel stock. Now the next stock I'm also going to talk about is Transcorp. Transcorp, the same industry as Ikeja Hotel. So let's look at Transcorp Hotel. And then I'll share reasons why I'm also bullish on this company stock. Remember, with all that is playing out in the economy, these guys are benefiting from it. So Transcorp Hotel, right here. So let's look at Transcorp Hotel. So before the financial statement loads, let's look at the charts of Transcorp Hotel. Now, look at Transcorp Hotel right here. This is also another example of a stock to watch out for. Now, this stock looks like one that is breaking out into new high again after ranging, trading within range. You can see here, between January 24 up till now, Transcorp has been trading within range. And right now, the stock looks like it's breaking out to new high again. So, we had the same thing happen right here. So, let's look at the financials, which is more, what I'm more interested in. Let's look at the revenue driver of Transcorp Hotel. So this is nine months period of Transcorp Hotel. And um, if you look closely, yes, this is the revenue from, okay, so let's start with January to September. Now look at Transcorp here, you see 28.9 to 48. Then you see up gross profit 21 to 34, operating profit 8.5 to 18, almost 100%. Then profit before tax 5.6 to 16, profit for the period 4.1 to 10. So let's uh, see if we can find the three months. Uh, yes, from July to September, you can see from 10 to 18, 7.5 to 13, 2.9 to 6, then Profit for the period 1.6 to 3. Now, now, let's look at the breakdown. Note 5. The breakdown of Transcorp revenue. Note 5. Now, look at it again. From room 18 to 31. Food and beverage 8.1 to 14.9. Service charge 213. And then shop rental 841 to 1.3. Now, you will see that the major driver of this revenue is rooms and food and beverage. Now, if you look at room and food and beverage, this accommodation is key. Like I said before, people will always move from one location to another. People will always do business. There will always be need for temporary accommodation. Actually, people that are moving from one location to another. Luxury spending is still one thing that is driving this hotel. Now, look at food and beverage right here, 8.1 to 14, meaning that these guys are able to adjust their prices upward in line with food inflation. That's why you're seeing this huge revenue. And it means going into 2025, as price of food is expected to surge higher on fair price hike, this guy would benefit more. So one of the major drivers of food price is transport 
and energy. Now, if this is if it's increasing, a company that is able to adjust its price in line with this trend and is able to benefit from it without suffering or loss of market share is actually one you should watch out for. So this is the reason why I am extremely bullish on Ikeja Hotel, Transcorp Hotel in 2025. Now, imagine this economic event that I've looked at and none is actually affecting this stock. Right here, that makes that makes them a very strong buy. So I still have four other strong buy stock that are not affected by this major economic event. In short, there is one that is even benefiting from it. There is one that has turned the negative effect of exchange rates into a huge profit as I speak right now. So and I'll share this four strong buy on Glowfolio. Dot com. So if you are yet to join Glufolio community, now is the time to take advantage of these six stocks to buy so that you can take position on them right now. I've shared two and you'll see my reasons why these two are good buy going forward in 2025. Higher inflation, both on the food side and energy, is actually going to benefit this guy because they have the power to review their costs. Then the other four, too, they also have that power to review the price of their product and also benefit more from it so i hope you got value from these two that i just share right now if you want to find out how to join glowfolio community just go to glowfolio.com and then you can click on subscribe or just go to glowfolio.com slash this is how to subscribe to glowfolio community glowfolio.com slash subscribe so when you go there you will see the subscription plan pick the one that is best for you and then you can then you can pay online you can do transfer once you pay online you automatically in you can see here we are reviewing our subscription upward very very soon so please if you are joining now this is an opportunity to take advantage of the pricing plan because these prices are going to change very very soon so i hope you got value from these two stock that i just shared right now if you're new if this is the first time you're watching my video and hit the subscription button or turn on the notification bell so that when i post interesting stock recommendations like this you'll be among the first to receive thank you